Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, we're going to make our little characters punch the bad guys in this video so that we hit them, they get knocked back a little bit, and we'll create a little sprite particle effect with it as well. Here we go. In order to do a little attack animation, we're going to need more flip books. You may see that I have renamed this struct as Hopper Movement Flipbooks. We're going to need another one. Edit anywhere and blueprint read write category config. And um, I've named this F Hopper Punch Flipbooks. And we're going to call this Punch Flipbooks. In order to have that, go over to your Hopper data if you're following along. And I've renamed this guy to F Hopper Movement Flipbooks. When you rename it and you compile it, you are going to have to reset all of your flipbooks. It's kind of a pain, but that's the way it is. And I've made another struct identical to that. I've just named it with punch down, punch up, punch right, left, down right, down left, up right, and up left. And I've created sprites and artwork for each of these directions. If you want to have multiple frames in your punch, you're going to have to do a lot more art. But I didn't feel like doing that. One frame's enough. Okay, and once you have that, we're going to need another timer. F timer handle attack timer, because this is going to operate kind of like our footstep timer. As well as another gate. So make another boolean down there. Last but not least, we need our function. I'm going to put this under an actions category. U function. Blueprint callable. Category equals actions. We'll call it void punch. Okay, this is a pretty hefty function here. Um, what we're going to do is when we uh, left click on the mouse, we're going to play the animation for our punch. We're also going to move our sprite a little bit in that direction and then back again so that there's kind of a uh, some force to our punch. So in order to do that, this is going to be another switch on our current animation direction to decide which flipbook we're playing. And then we also need to set the location and reset the location in this function. So first we're going to make an F vector called new location. And we're going to initialize it to our current relative location. Now. If our attack gate is open, we're going to open and close our attack gate kind of like our footsteps so that we can only attack in a little window of time so we can't just spam the punch. You can set it to spam the punch if you want. I'd like to keep it um, sane. All right, inside the attack gate, I'm going to make another switch on our current animation direction. Go ahead and make a default and a break. And we need to generate all the missing case statements. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the sprite. We're going to set the flipbook to one of our punch flipbooks. There we go. And punch down for down. Now what we also need to do is move our sprite a little bit. I've already played with these, so I know which directions are which. So in the x-axis, if we're facing down, we need to move our sprite negative 25 um, in order to move a little bit towards the camera. And then after we've set that on the x-axis with that variable, we need to set the relative location to that new location. I'll fill in the rest of the switch in a second, but just to show when we're done attacking, we're going to close our attack gate. We're going to set another timer, like we did with our footsteps. This time we're setting the attack timer. We're going to do another lambda, which captures this object. And inside the lambda, we're going to set our attack gate back to true, so we're opening the attack gate once the timer runs out. And we are also going to set the relative location back to a zero vector, so we're back to where we started. We also need to set the timer. I'm going to do 0.3 seconds again, 
and we are not looping. Finish with a semicolon. Now come just below and go to your animate function and we want to check if the attack gate is closed. And if so, we want to return because we're in the middle of an, a different animation for our punching. We don't want to animate our walking or our idle. So that'll return us early. Okay, let's finish up the rest of this switch. So I'm going to just copy and paste this into all of these and then we will edit them. Okay, once the flip books are set, now we need to fix the locations. So if we're going up, it's the opposite. We're just adding 25 on the x-axis. If we're going right, we're on the y-axis now, and we are adding. If we're going left, we're on the y-axis and we're subtracting. If we're going down right, we're subtracting 25, and we are also adding 25 in the y-axis. If we're going down left, we just need to grab our left in the y-axis as well. If we're going up right, we are adding 25. Same with up left, add 25. And then grab corresponding y-axes for those directions as well. Last but not least, come up to your constructor, set your attack gate to true by default. Okay, we've got the animation set up. Now let's create the knockback force and the particle emission. A couple more things that we want to add to our header. First of all, two floats. An attack radius, set it to 150 by default, and an attack force, which we're gonna to set to 750. We want to add a new component of U property, visible anywhere, blueprint, read only, Category Components. Make a T object pointer of U sphere component. Call it Attack Sphere. Scroll up to the top. Class U sphere component forward declaration. We're going to modify our punch. Let's return a bool so we know we've hit something. And we're going to pass in a Niagara system pointer called system to spawn. Forward declare the U Niagara system as well. Come over to your build.cs file. After AI module, we need to add Niagara. Come to your constructor, get the attack sphere. We need to create a default sub object of U sphere component and call it attack sphere. The attack sphere needs to set up attachment to the root component. And we want to set the sphere radius to our attack radius. Change your function to have a bool return and go ahead and pass in that U Niagara system pointer system to spawn. Make a bool called B hit and initialize it to false. Make this into an initialization list as well just to stay consistent with modern C++. Return to the punch function and after the timer, we now need to make an array of actor pointers called overlapping actors. Get the attack sphere, get overlapping actors pass in the overlapping actors array, and we're going to filter hopper enemy static class. We need to include hopper enemy, so go ahead and do that. Now we need to go through all our overlapping actors. So first, let's check if we have more than zero. If, we, if our overlapping actors.num is greater than zero, then we know we've hit something, so go ahead and set hit to true. And for every actor pointer in overlapping actors, we need to cast, first of all, that actor. 
to a hopper enemy type. And we know it's a hopper enemy because we filtered for the hopper enemy static class, so we don't need to check it. Const f vector. We're going to make a direction. We're going to use the ukismet math library, and we're going to use a function called get direction unit vector. We're going to pass in our location, and then we're going to get the hopper enemy's location and pass that next. I think I've got one too many parentheses in there. Next, get the hopper enemy, and we're going to launch that character. We're going to create an F vector from our direction dot X multiplied by our attack force, our direction dot Y multiplied by our attack force, and our direction dot Z plus one to make it positive because it's zero and we if we multiply by the attack force, then we'll have zero there. Surround this in parentheses for your order of operations. And then pass a false and a false for our overrides. Next we want to check if the system to spawn pointer is valid. You're going to need to include the Niagara system at the top as well. Get the U Niagara function library spawn system at location. Pass in this as the world object, the system to spawn, and the location is the hopper enemy get actor location. Last but not least, at the bottom, return B hit. Make sure that these two includes are uh, at the top so that this works. Go ahead and add some comments if you would like to, and compile. Okay, so let me show you real fast. I have created a new folder called attack, and just like our movement, here's the texture, the sprites extracted, and I've made flipbooks for each of the directions. Okay, open up your player character, find your punch flipbooks over here, and we need to set Open up your project settings, go to input, and add on the left mouse button, punch. It's pretty simple now. All we need to do is get our event punch and call our punch function and pass in a particle system of your choice. Now when we play, and if we left click, you should see the punch animation and you'll move a little bit in that direction give a little force and if we punch our bad guys we can knock them around and there's our little particle effects knock them off so there we go that's how you punch with a 2d sprite and knock around some bad guys see ya